Hello and welcome to the Fuzzy Loaf Podcast where two dorks talk about the week's happening in uh, nerd and pop culture. I am your host Scott. With me as always is Matt. Hello, hello. Hey, we're back after our uh, 2015 Two, yeah. movie spectacular. Took a little while to get those out. There was some audio issues and yeah. lots and, of fun. And then you were sick last yeah. weekend so we couldn't do it. So we're here with a ton of crap. Mm-hmm. And we'll try to run through it kind of quick. Yeah. But, you know. Um, I don't know if you got a chance to look at the stuff on Evernote that I posted. Some of it's probably I know, old I, now. I tried to, but it, for some reason it didn't come up on my phone. Um, okay, so I'm just going to run through some of it really quick because I don't know if we're going to really talk about a lot of it. Uh Jessica Jones officially got renewed for a second season. Oh, right. I forgot about uh, that. It'll come in 2017. Uh, do, 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 do. do we know it'll come in 2017? They announced it comes in 2017. Oh, really? Yeah. I they never saw they that. said it, it'll come after uh, The Defenders and Luke Cage. So Defenders are coming in 2017? Or 2016? I don't think. No. Yeah. They don't have Iron well, Fist. I know, yet. but that's. The, uh, well, we've heard all these rumors that they're shifting around stuff. Yeah. We'll see how they Who knows? How it works I don't out. care when it gets released as long as it does, you know? It's one of those things. Um, at the TCAs, which is the Television Critics Awards or something, something like television something, something who cares? awards. Something, something. Uh, Netflix's chief creative officer, Ted Sarandos, said they're open to spinning off any characters that appear within the Marvel Netflix series. Yeah, they're looking um, into a Punisher, apparently. Yeah. And that f- is rumored to be a confirmed series, like one that they're going to go forward with. We'll see. A rumor to be confirmed doesn't I know. make any sense. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, people are saying it's not just a possibility, but that they've heard from people that it is happening. Right. Uh, take that with a grain of salt. Um, <clears throat> Netflix has reached out to Matt Groening, the creator of Simpsons and Futurama, to work on a new animated series. Oh my god, that would be the It's reported that they, it'll have ten episodes per season to start. Um... Other Netflix news, Unbreakable Kimmy Schmidt Season 2 premieres April 15th of this year, and then Orange is the New Black uh, Season 4 premieres June 17th of this year. Sweet. I can't wait for Kimmy Schmidt to come back. Yeah. I watched that whole series in a day. It was so good. I was not expect. I thought it was going to be funny. I was not expecting it to be that good. Where, yeah, I watched it, I think it was over the course of a weekend, but I watched the entire thing, and then Ashley watched it catching up, because she only watched, like, the first episode with me, oh. and I watched it again. <laughs> and it was, it was so great. So was that all the little bits you got? Uh, there, there's quite a bit more. Uh, I'm going to just... You want to run through a little bit more little bits, and we'll get into the main... Yeah, that, that's what the, I was the thinking. The open tabs? We'll get into the yep. open tabs. Um... I'll skip over Suicide Squad trailer because we're going to talk about that yeah, a bit. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Um, last week, DC and CW gave us a look at some of the characters that will be appearing in uh, both the Justice League movies and the DC Cinematic Universe or DC Entertainment Universe, whatever they're calling it, going forwards. Uh, we got a, an extended look at Gal Gadot as Wonder Woman. Gal Gadot, actually. That's how you put Gadot, it. That is whatever. A, that, Okay. It's been confirmed. Gal Gadot, confirmed. <laughs> I know, it's one of those things where it's like, people, you hear Gadot, Gadot, yeah. whatever. Um, so what did you think of her? Because I don't know if you have any thoughts on I, this. They showed like eight seconds of yeah. Wonder Woman, so like, Wonder Woman is actually one of the ones besides Suicide Squad I'm really looking forward to. Yeah. It just, I don't want it to be all sapia to me, Yeah, to me, and this, that, I'm hoping it's not like that, to me, this is DC's chance to uh, beat Marvel to the punch. For the first time. Yeah. Because we're not getting Captain Marvel until 2018, 2018, 2019. Is it 2018? 2018. And we're getting Wonder Woman 2017? 2017. Yeah. Next so no, this is their November. chance to really no, hit. Next summer, fall, spring. Yeah. It's sometime Because I think year. Justice League comes out next November. Um, this is their chance to beat Marvel to the punch and have like the first really impactful female-led superhero movie. You know, like where, yeah. where the female is the star. Um, hopefully they don't screw it up, but we'll see. I hope not. Because I was, you know, I was talking to a friend the other day. She was talk, texting me about uh, Wonder Woman's look. How mm-hmm. she kind of wishes she had the tiara and not just like the headband. Yeah. And I was like, actually, Wonder Woman's costumes is one of like the best things I've seen out of Batman v Superman. Yeah. Except I wish it was less sapient and had a little more color to it. But I mean, the bronze for Wonder Woman doesn't look too bad. I'll, mm-hmm. I'll take it. And just to confirm, Wonder Woman is set at June 23rd, 2017. We'll see if that changes. And Justice League Part 1 is November 17th, 2017. Okay, cool. Um, 
So CW's show, DC's Legends of Tomorrow, we'll see a whole bunch of DC and Vertigo characters. This is coming from yeah. one of the sh- show creators, um, including Jonah Hex. I what, heard a rumor we might get our man. Yeah, I saw that this morning too. There, yeah. So this is really cool because this gives them the opportunity to pull in uh, because there's a time travel element in this idea of the multiverse is like really instilled in this where they're not just traveling back in time and forward in time, but these are different time possibilities that they're hitting that uh, we could see characters that we would never have dreamed of from DC and Vertigo. Yeah. Have you watched the new episodes of the first I only two saw yet? the first episode. It kind of didn't blow me away. The second episode is better. Okay. Say. Yeah. Second episode is like, they should have aired it all as one. Mm-hmm. That's where they kind of fudged up, but I think it's going to be, it's a fun show. Yeah. You can tell these guys are just big Doctor Who fans and they wanted to add like Doctor Who to their Did you their listen world? to last week's episode or maybe it was the week before of Geek History Lesson? Um, I listen to it every week. They did <laughs> Rip Hunter. Yep. Um, that was really cool to hear. So you guys should check that out if you don't follow Geek History Lesson. Yeah, we're going to plug them because... <laughs> It's an awesome podcast. Um, CBS and Time Warner have struck a new deal that may see CW shows being taken off of popular over-the-top streaming services, including Netflix, Hulu, and other streaming services, because Time Warner is hoping to build their own subscription network for uh, the app, or for the subscription app for the network. This is uh, going to destroy... Yeah. I'm hoping this doesn't go through. This is coming from somebody at Time Warner that they're working on this right now. We'll see. Um if every network has their own subscription service, well, then you've just, like... Yeah, I'm not paying $15 a month per fucking channel. There's n- there's no way. No, because then, then it's worse than cable. Mm-hmm. It's... Oh, God. Damn it. Yeah. Damn capitalism. Just torrent it, man. I mean, <laughs> I, mean I hate to... I hate to uh, promote that, Because I but, watch all these shows on Hulu the day after mm-hmm. they air. Same with me. Well... I'm not. I'm not going to be able to afford Warner Brothers too. I have Hulu, Netflix. Probably going to be getting HBO now once I move again. My roommate and I are going to yeah uh, split it because he's got Netflix. I have Hulu, so we'll just like we'll just like split the bill for our subscription services. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I know it's a bummer. Anyway, do you uh, have any more quick bits? Yeah, a couple Star Wars things, then we'll be done. So uh, Poe Dameron is getting his own ongoing comic series. I don't remember. I don't think we touched on this. No, because it's no, been a couple. No, weeks. yeah. We've- um, so uh, I think this is cool, especially because he was like kind yeah. of spoilers or not really spoilers. He was supposed to. For he was supposed now. to die in the movie in the oh, original really? script. They had written him his character when it crashed on Jakku was supposed to die, but when they oh. got Oscar Isaac. Uh, they decided to... We're re- going to keep him because we've got Oscar eyes. Yeah, so they did some last-minute rewrites. That's why why that scene where he crashes it and like so whatever... Weird. It felt Yeah, because I think they filmed it early on when they were still deciding what they were going to do and oh, how he was going to come back. that explains so much. Yeah. Um, I'm so glad they this decided is, to keep him. Same with me. Because he's one of the best characters. This is a really Every cool opportunity great. to explore his... So it's going to be... It's going to be before the movie starts uh, and... It'll be an ongoing series, is what they said. So we'll see uh, if that goes through the events of the movies, jumps past, or if it's going to jump little, around. Or get whatever. a little bit more backstory on um, the mm-hmm. Resistance's best pilot. Yep. And uh, since we've been gone for two weeks, we have not gotten a chance to talk about Star Wars Episode Eight has been pushed back until December oh, of yeah. 2017. So um, it was originally supposed to air in May. Uh, it was really funny because Disney said, "Don't worry." Pirates of the Caribbean 5 will now push up to take uh, that slot. And everyone's just like, oh, great. That's not no a substitution. Um, so there's a lot of stuff going on in the background that people are, you know, they're supposed to some script rewrites. There was some filming delays because of weather. Um, there was some character shakeups because they realized that people loved Poe, Finn, and yeah, Ray so much that up. they wanted to yeah. incorporate this. You know, I think more. this is nothing but a good thing. No, same with me. I think this is a we, great thing. This is yeah. them listening to their fans and saying, okay, we can change a few things and make this movie uh, even better than it was And I'm to totally be. fine with Star Wars becoming a Christmas mm-hmm. spot now because I don't have to celebrate Christmas. I can celebrate Star Wars. Yeah. Well, and then somebody brought up a good point. I think it was on Collider, but it might have been on a, uh, a different one, um, that may because a lot of people were saying well may is supposed to be star wars month but it's like now imagine this movie comes out december may you can have the blu-ray the dvd all the action figures like all this stuff like that just in time for may the 4th yep exactly (laughs) so i think that's it'll be a good thing yeah um there was some news about 
uh, new toy productions featuring Ray uh, that ca- came out after the whole uh, hashtag where's Ray thing. Good. Um, there are going to there are going to be some more toys coming out. Yeah, there's is, quite a bit. I think there was. There's going to be Han Solo four now. Four or They're, five different lines of toys that Disney yeah. was. They, they had to out. wait for the movie to come out before they can release more toys. Which yeah. Makes sense. And um, I don't know if you want to talk about this at all, but I put this on there as a news item. Uh, for the second year in a row, all uh, 40, right, Oscar nominees for leading and sporting roles are white. So this is a big yeah. snub to. There's quite a few actors, I mean, um, that were of other races that should have been nominated. Um, But I don't know if you saw last night, the SAG Awards, there was a lot of people that were seeing recognition. Yeah, I I saw I don't want to go too much into it because I'm not really too qualified to talk about it. It's one of those things to me, uh, I understand it's a big deal. To me, the Oscars are so irrelevant to, it's all, it's mostly, I think it was like 60% are white and 74% on the panel are male. Yeah. Or something like um, that. The thing is, see, there's a lot of things where, like, a lot of the nominees, I'm like, they all deserve to be on that nominee list. Mm-hmm. Um, except for, I think Bridges Spies should be replaced with Creed on the Best Picture. But, you know. And Ryan Coogler should have been probably nominated for a Best Director. Yeah, and it, that's where it's hard is there's a lot of... Uh, it's not a clean, a, like clear-cut lines where right. it's like this. Like, this, this was a far superior movie right. than this. It's like they were both great, and I could see how, you know, people sitting down and talking back and forth that they may but, have decided this movie over yeah. that movie. It doesn't but. highlight so much a problem with the Oscars as much a problem with Hollywood in general, mm-hmm. where like these these actors and directors and writers of color are not given the same opportunities. They're not hired the same. You know, there aren't roles for them, which is where the real problem lies rather than just, like, old Oscars. Yeah. In- but they are revamping the Oscar, um, the Academy member process, yeah. which should be... Which is nothing but a good thing, too. So to get out, you know, like, some of the older white people, older white males that aren't doing anything, you know, to get more fresh faces into the Oscars. Yeah, and and I think that that brings up a good point, because I think uh, that's what it is largely, is a lot of people are uh, trying to treat the symptom, or whatever, that people aren't getting nominated for Oscars, like, they're focusing on that, when the real issue is, there isn't as much opportunity for females. Right, we need to be hiring these people for jobs, instead of, yeah, that's where the real problem is. Mm -hmm. Because then, obviously, they'll be, if you have more of them in there, into the field, the more chance they'll be nominated. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, uh, let's move on to... You want to get into some... The big topics. Yeah, that was it for the little news. Uh, I forgot to have you open a tab, but I just want to start this while it's fresh in my mind. New Justice League animated series was announced. Oh, yep. Justice League Action on Cartoon Network. We saw something uh, about this like a year ago or so. Or so. It was like a, like a poster in the office at uh, Cartoon Network. Mm-hmm. But So it's a, a new Justice League animated series. Uh, Kevin Conroy, the mm-hmm. one true Batman, is coming back to voice Batman. Mark Hamill will be back to voice the Joker. Um, it'll focus mostly around Superman, Batman, and Wonder Woman, as well as like other Justice Leaguers. Um, which it all sounds really great. The bummer side is it's only going to be eleven minute episodes. Yes, and me and you talked about this because uh, we're both fans of a lot of Cartoon Network shows or like the ideas for the shows. But my issue is that a lot of times uh, the eleven minute episode kind of holds it back. You can't the story can't progress enough, and it just feels like a series of events happening versus like a story unfolding or right. You have to binge it in order to get like all everything. Yeah. Um, I forgot what I was going to say. Um, yeah, and I also heard, too, that it's uh, going to be more kid-oriented. Yeah, you can like kind of t- tell by the animation style Which on is kind of disappointing, because I really... I've been, I was watching Justice League uh, animated series again, the Bruce mm-hmm. Tim, and it's it's like, why can't we just get another... Like, or like Young Justice, another show like this. Where it's aimed at be, like teens or something. Everything's so. got to be geared directly towards the young kids. Well, I think this is what they're doing. They're seeing, uh, they're trying to create, they're trying to instill themselves as uh, like the same thing that Marvel is doing right now. Where if you look, um, yeah, Disney the Marvel XD. Yeah, shows are the same too. But it's like Disney XD has a ton of, uh, they've got like Spider-Man, they've got Guardians of the Galaxy. Avengers. They've got Avengers. Um, 
they've they've got a bunch of other superhero stuff where they're trying to get kids in young um because like my nephew is a good example of this he was over and they wanted to watch a movie and i was like i've guardians of the galaxy and he's like is that like the tv show like that's how he knows them and i was uh, like i mean kind of like not not same really characters yeah i was like show. it's same characters but it's not the same thing it's not animated um but I think that's what DC is trying to do because they're building up the Justice League in these movies over the next couple of years, or hopefully for them, they're thinking like the next 20 years, right. we're going to have superhero movies. So we want to get kids in while they're like 10 years old or like that 10 or younger. Sense. But it's still, it's a bummer for people like us that we want to watch these shows yeah, and we want to like, partake like in Young it. Justice and, and Justice League where kids can watch it and so can adults, mm-hmm. you know? Well, even some of DC's animated movies, like the straight to release. Well, those are for adults. Yeah, the, some of those straight are up. really adult, and those are g- good ideas because it's like you know it it uh, it gives the adult fans like more stuff to. They watch do have a new one. Them. They just announced coming out in April: uh, Justice League versus Teen Titans. Mm. So I'll that's check pretty it cool. Out. It's gonna have like the classic Titans lineup. Yeah. Plus Blue Beetle. So that should be uh, pretty sweet, and um. Yeah, so then let's get it. Do you want to get into one of the other? Yeah, let's uh, let's stick on DC. So let's talk about. Um, be, do we want to talk about the DC Hanna Barbera stuff? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, this week, uh, Entertainment Weekly announced that DC Comics is going to be like uh, rebooting, reimagining a bunch of old uh, Hanna Barbera cartoon properties in comic book form. The biggest, like, shock was uh, Scooby Apocalypse, Mm -hmm. where you see on the cover, by Jim Lee, who's great art, you see on the cover is uh, Shaggy with handlebar mustache, hipster beard, tattoos, and, uh, you know, gauges, and uh, Fred with tribal tattoos. Yeah, I was going to say, I just noticed now that Fred also has tattoos. Yeah, yeah. And he's wearing an orange bandana instead of an ascot, like... Like a like you'd pull up like an outlaw. Yeah, yeah. It's like a post-apocalypse, like Scooby hunting monsters kind of thing. It it definitely looks weird, but I really want to check it out. I really want to check out all of these. Do we know? Are these limited series? Is this going to be like I a think it's going to be run? ongoing. Oh, really? Wow. We'll have to. Ch- I'll I'll gladly check uh, some of these out, especially. Yeah, I don't know if I'm as interested. It like reminds in the me of the Archie but... reboot from mm-hmm. earlier. And then you've got the Flintstones, which is, like, taking them out of the super cartoony, and they kind of look more real. Yeah, it looks super real, but like, almost photorealistic. Where they said the Flintstones focused on, uh, it was, like, social commentary back in the 60s. Mm-hmm. It's going to be uh, the same, it's going to have the same feel to it, it's just going to be contemporary. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, that's awesome, too. you got to relate. Um Wacky Raceland looks insane. Mm-hmm. The crazy, like, Wacky Racers, you know, all the Hanna Barbera stuff, very, like, kitty cartoony. And they took, like, Wacky Racers and mashed it up with Mad Max. <laughs> they even got the designer of the cars from Mad Max to do the designs for this stuff in the comic. Yeah. So I definitely want to check that out. It's, like, the closest to a Mad Max comic we're going to get. Yeah. Um, and then Johnny Future looks yep. insane, which will cross Johnny Quest. Space Ghost, uh, was it the Humongoloids or Herculoids or whatever? Herculoids. Herculoids. Um, did I say Birdman too? No, you did not yet. Birdman, a bunch of other stuff. And I I think that's going to be awesome. There's mm-hmm. the one cover where Space Ghost is floating out of a ship and uh, Johnny and Haji have guns pulled on him. And I think that just looks so cool. I, was, I would totally get that as a poster in my room. Yeah, all of these look really interesting to me. I don't know if... There's, like, the chance that these are going to kind of suck or, like, be really there just There is a chance, but I'm going to at least check out the first no, issues yeah. for all of these. Um, I hope that they're great. Uh, my only concern with, like, these ongoing series is that you're going to get a lot of people uh, who are fans of, like, the original properties who are going to be like, this isn't what the original property really is. It's a reimagining. No, the I original know. property still exists. You know how people it, are. It's the same with Archie. Yeah. The, maybe there's some people who are like <coughs> 900 years old who are like, this isn't the Archie that I know. Well, yeah, obviously not. Because <laughs> people can't relate to that Archie. Anymore. Yeah. You know, you have to, the character has to evolve with the times if you want to keep it, you know, fresh. Like, go back and try reading an old Spider Man comic book. It's going to be entirely different. You're not going to be able to relate to it. Yeah. Um, so the next topic, also DC related, uh, Jim Lee tweeted a picture a couple days ago 
uh, January 22nd of a, a blue curtain with the words rebirth superimposed on them. Um, so the rumor mill is going around that DC is going to do another kind of like fresh boot of the series of all of their series. Yeah. Um, a relaunch. That's a better word for it. Um, which I don't, I don't know if they're going to do that. I could totally they, see them doing it because uh, they, they just might. keep they keep doing it. They well, just keep doing it. So here's like a I haven't liked the New Fifty Two since it started. Mm-hmm. Since they announced it, I was like, oh no, oh no, I don't like any of this. Um, the New Fifty Two brought on a ton of new readers to comics, not just DC in general, but comics, right? But what what happened with the New Fifty Two is they also lost a lot of the already existing readers because. Uh, they were just like it was just weird to them it was totally different so they've got all these new people that only knew the new 52 but they lost all of their or a significant amount of their previous readership yeah one I can imagine too that's probably around the time where imagine if you've been a comic book fan for uh, like 20-30 years of your life you're reading these comics you're enjoying them and all of a sudden you, you know you're thinking maybe I'm getting too old and then they completely reboot and you don't like it then you're like this is my jumping off point. I just don't understand it anymore. Like, it's not, it must why not be does, for me. What, why does Superman have body armor that yeah. doesn't make any sense? Yeah, it's... Why does the Flash have body armor in the freaking movie, man? It looks so dumb! It, it doesn't so make stupid. any sense! <laughs> <laughs> Anyways. <laughs> uh, DC's character designs are just garbage now. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, uh, yeah, I don't... It could mean, like, rebirth in, like, a character, because, I mean, there was um, Green Lantern rebirth... Flash Rebirth, when they brought back Hal Jordan and Barry Allen. Yeah. People could be reading into this a lot, but I wouldn't put it past DC if they're going to reboot the comics again. Yeah. Or at least maybe a certain section of the comic. You know what I mean? Like, they may keep all the weird... Because, like, didn't they just announce that there was going to be a Batman where it's uh, Jim Gordon in the frickin'... Uh, oh, Jim Gordon's been Batman for a while now. Okay, I thought that was coming out later this year. I, mm. No, I don't um, know what the hell's happening. Yeah. I am so I don't read these comics anymore. They lost me. I don't like the new 52. I just won't. I can't. Because when Marvel does a reboot, they do like a soft reboot. Mm-hmm. Where it's just basically new number ones. Make It's like new story arcs for everybody. Yeah, right? it's like, hey, this is a good spot to jump on. This character existed, but you can jump on at this point. Right. And they're, it'll make they're not sense. really retconning much. It's more just like... Here's a new story arc to jump onto, but with, um, Warren, for with the new Fifty Two was like a complete, everything's changed, and I don't like any of it. Yeah. Um, but then uh, Marvel released an image. Uh, I don't know if it was this week or the past week or whatever. The Dead No More, mm-hmm. with spider webs all around it. So people are speculating who's coming back from the dead in Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. My guess, which I think is totally a lot of other people, is Doctor Octopus. Yeah, because he's been dead for a while. Um, they hinted at his return in the early issues of the all new Amazing Spider-Man. Mm-hmm. So it it makes sense for Doc Ock to come back. Yeah, but what do you think? Uh, I think I mean Doc Ock makes absolute the most sense. Although, um, it depends on which. I, I, do, do we have confirmed that Gwen Stacy is back or like alive in this universe? She's like, not. Yeah. So she's she's been she's Gwen Stacy have, and Uncle Ben always stay dead. Yeah, but we've we've seen uh, the spinoff uh, Spider Gwen, which yeah, from an did great. Universe. No, no, I know. But could you imagine that in this new universe that's created post uh, Secret Wars that? She is Gwen Stacy might be alive. I don't think so. I think it'd be. I think cool, bringing back I, Gwen Stacy would be a huge mistake. I don't know because I think I mean Spider Gwen did pretty well. People liked right. it a lot. But bringing back Gwen Stacy into the main Marvel or I think it's called Marvel Prime. Now, yeah, um, is a mistake. That that death needs to. It's it's like the two deaths that need to always stay the same are ben, are Uncle Ben and Gwen Stacy. They yeah. matter the most. So. We'll see. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's Doc, Doc Ock. I'm pretty sure it's Doc Ock, too, but I want it to be Gwen Stacy. Especially if it's Spider-Gwen, Gwen Stacy. It wouldn't be Gwen. How would it be Spider-Gwen? I don't know. How is 
freaking which version of this character and that version Spider-Man of this character. Spider-Gwen is from an, she, she lives in an alternate universe. It's even established in the new Marvel universe yeah. that Spider-Gwen is still in an alternate universe. She's not in the Marvel Prime. She's in her own universe. They can do whatever they want. It's comic books. <sighs> I mean, look, look what it's they not, did with Secret Wars. It's not going to be Gwen Stacy. Yeah, but look what they did with Secret Wars. Like, you, you know, they can pull whatever character from whatever universe they want. Yeah. But I think they, they want to keep Gwen dead. That's a big Well, thing. I want her Because every time they've tried to bring Gwen back, it's just people just fucking lose their well, shit. They don't have to. They can just be like, hey, Peter Parker doesn't even have to be aware of it. She can just be Spider-Gwen. I was hoping the mar- they would be about uh, him and Mary Jane's marriage. Uh-huh. That would be dead. Because <laughs> I think not having Mary Jane in Spider-Man is, like, and with Spider-Man is, like, the biggest mistake. Nah. I'm over it. I, I'm i still not. <laughs> but, uh, so, yeah. Do you want to get into more of the... Sure. Uh, well, let's talk about the uh, Captain America announcement. Yeah. Third. So, uh, Marvel released, they had, like, like, a Captain America... 75th anniversary special because you know DC was doing their things Marvel had to do their thing and uh they announced that Steve Rogers is coming back as Captain America and Sam Wilson is also going to be Captain America oops whoa that was my phone so let's there's going to be two Captain Americas Sam Wilson's going to still have the traditional round shield and Mm -hmm. Steve Rogers is going to have some weird blue shield or whatever uh what, before I get into it, what do you, what do you think of, about the announcement and looking at the images and all that stuff? Uh, it's cool, but I kind of feel it diminishes Sam Wilson as Captain America. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> Sam, this is where Marvel usually shines, is allowing like legacy characters to take over the mantle. Um, but at the same time, post-Secret Wars, we're now seeing it where there's Spider-Man... You know, uh, Peter Parker as Spider Man. There's Miles Morales. And there's Miles Morales. And And then you've got Old Man Logan Wolverine. You've got uh X 23 Wolverine. You've got Sam Wilson, Captain America. Steve Rogers, Captain America. You're going to have. But this Steve Rogers doesn't look like the normal older Steve Rogers that we've been seeing. No, he's been. He's been. He's got the super soldier serum back in him again. Yeah. Um, So. I don't know. It de- it depends on how they handle it, really. To be completely honest, yeah. I just think it's it's Marvel. They they push the diversity for their characters, but then they're too like they don't want to like alienate the hardcore fans of the characters, so they can't completely give up. It's like when they brought Miles in. Well, we have Miles, but we we really can't get rid of Peter because we can't lose that. And see, this is where I w- I would much rather see uh, Steve Rogers take on the role of um, why am I blanking on his name now? I don't know. You're... I don't. Okay. Uh, but anyways, I would love to see him take up uh, like Nick a back. Fury Nick Fury. There we go. Oh, my God. Well, because like, they have Nick Fury. That's why. Yeah. But you know what I mean? Like, I'd love to see him take on that sort of role and let... Uh, I'm assuming Sam Wilson will still be in the all-new, all-different Avengers yeah, yeah. and all that stuff. This is more like when, when Bucky took over for Cap and mm-hmm. they brought Cap back. That uh, he was uh, he wasn't necessarily Cap. He was uh, he was uh, Shield Agent Steve Rogers. Yeah, and like I would love to see him in more of uh, less of a superhero role and more of like a spy role. A, yeah, or like a background where like you see him pop up, but he does. I don't know. It's right. it's just one of those things. We've had Steve Rogers as Captain America for so long. I don't really need to see more stories with him. There isn't anything that they can't tell me right. that they've or you know, that. Anything new that they're going it's to? A, it's almost like if you're going to change it, just stick with it. Yeah. But they don't. But they're also afraid of alienating. And then you've got civil war mm-hmm. coming up again. So. I guess maybe that's why they brought him back. It's although that'd be kind of lame. Um, all right. On so, to the biggest thing. We're really round on the squad. Yes. Cool. On to. So, um, well, we're supposed we're going to talk about this last week, but we didn't do the show last week. Uh, the Suicide Squad trailer. Uh, was awesome. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't really know how to get into it besides just be like, it was great. Uh, I want, if somebody from Warner Brothers or DC is listening, and I know you are, I'm just kidding. Uh, You're one who, of the six yeah, listeners. Whoever cut this freaking trailer deserves all of the money. Yeah, because it was cut perfectly. The choice of the of uh, Bohemian Rhapsody from but where Queen, it cuts in and where it cuts out is awesome. Yes. Like, the rhythm and the feel for this trailer. This is the best-looking DC property of all times. Of the movies. That we've seen so far. Yeah. But I just mean, like, seriously, this... 
this has me so much more excited than Batman v Superman. Um, I know we did our top 10 list of 2016 or like most anticipated films of 2016 a couple weeks ago. And this was on my list. And I think this jumped up a few spots because of this. Trailer. I don't know if this was on my list or not, but it, ju- if it wasn't, it jumped onto it. Yeah. And it, cause like I was holding out hope that, uh, for this movie, because Zack Snyder is not the one leading the film, that they would get the tone at least right. You know, I wanted to. It's gonna be a, a fun, crazy, tone. just fucked up movie. And there's color. There's yes. color. <laughs> That's the biggest thing for me. And there's comedy. Yeah. I mean, we've we've heard David Ayer saying the whole time that like this is kind of not necessarily a dark comedy, but this like there's comedic moments and there's like action and there's serious moments. Right. Um. And we all took it as like, oh sure, you know, because. I don't know like the DC properties have not been funny for a long time right so let's, let's uh, I want to talk about the Joker for mm-hmm. a second because it's a big part and then I want to talk about favorite moments from the trailer uh, I, from my my impression from the Joker was Jared Little is going to do an awesome job he looks great I still don't like the costume yeah mostly just the teeth and the tattoos if that was it was minus the teeth minus the tattoos perfect yeah, my biggest issue with Jared Leto as the Joker is the costume. I think he's portraying the character f- really well for their universe that they're setting up. Like, he is a fucking psycho. You know, he pulls off that psychopath, and it's like he's kind of toying with you, and he's, like, this close to just, like, going off the edge, like, going off the rails, just absolute batshit crazy. And he plays that really, really well. Yeah. Um, what was your favorite moment from the trailer? One of my favorite moments is, honestly, it's kind of it's kind of a minor moment, but when they cut Captain Boomerang out of the the body bag, the the postal bag, mm-hmm. they mailed him. That's like, <laughs> yeah, and he just jumps out and just socks someone in the face. And I just, yeah, I was, doesn't even know who it is. Doesn't even care. It's just, just like, yeah. <laughs> so that was probably one of my favorite moments. Yeah. Uh, my favorite moment also includes Jack Courtney, which I never thought I would say. And that's where the music cuts right before, um, if you've heard Bohemian Rhapsody, the part right where it builds it, up. Yeah. yeah, and it's just like, it starts rocking in your face. He grabs a beer, very clearly behind cover, pops the beer and starts drinking it. Um, and it's, it, like, if that's any indication of the sort of comedy mixed in with the action that we're going to get... I have high hopes for this movie because that to me says, you know, like I'm somebody that's been in jail for a long time. Here's my opportunity to f- like fucking have it's, a beer. It says something when Jai Courtney is both our favorite parts of the trailer. Yeah. And it's something that nobody thought they would say. Nothing against Jai Courtney, but he typically has. I think he'll do well in this. He's just been, role. I think he's been cast. He's been typecast. In right. this role where it's like somebody that doesn't have a lot of lines in a shitty B But he's also movie. the lead, you know? Yeah. Where he's, I think he'd be a good supporting. Mm-hmm. Uh, I really like the scenes, too, where you've got Deadshot on the hood of the car and he's got his wrist guns. And yeah. he's just... I mean, okay, we, I think we have to say this. Nobody in the trailer stuck out as being, like, as acting poorly. No, everyone, uh, like, seemed great. Yeah. Um, all the characters looked fantastic. Um, like, I don't know. It's just the whole the whole trailer was great. The trailer made made me really interested in Katana uh-huh. because you see her sword, which is this. I don't know if you know anything soul about Stealer her. Or something like soul that. Taker. Soul Taker. And so what is. those are when you see the spirits, those are the souls of the people killed with the sword. Mm-hmm. And apparently, her dead husband resides in the sword too, oh, okay. and she can confide in the souls in the sword for you know advice or whatever she needs. Yeah. So whoever she kills with the sword, the soul is added to. Like, that is so cool. It's so interesting. Yeah. And, I mean, kudos to DC for... Marvel has been tiptoeing around all this weird shit for so long. Like, you and know, with, we waited so long to have an Ant-Man movie because they were like, oh, I don't know if people will understand. But, and like, all know, this shit. And, like, Guardians of the Galaxy. And DC's just like, fuck it, rip the, ba- oh, rip the bandit off. <laughs> <laughs> that is true. But on the other hand, I want to think it's because Marvel yeah, has, paved the way with mm-hmm. all that weird stuff. Whereas DC goes, oh, so I guess we can do this crazy shit. Yeah. So... Um, what did you think of Harley? Because I know some people had issues with Margot Robbie's uh, portrayal of Har- Harley. Um, I have to wait until the movie to see. Uh, she looks cool. Um, yeah. 
The oh, only excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was the pizza. <laughs> the only thing that mildly bothered me about her character was uh, it doesn't she doesn't have a Jersey accent or that and, New York accent. Yeah, like the New York, yeah, yeah. whatever. Uh, and we know she can do it because of Wolf, Wolf of Wall Street. Street. She did it fantastically. So maybe like, we'll he, see it a little more in the actual movie. Yeah, he, but like hearing those lines, those lines. I think because a lot of people are like, oh, those lines were cheesy or whatever. Yeah, but it's like if we heard them with her jersey, with that like New York accent, I think it would have been the perfect yeah. portrayal of the character. I don't know a lot of other people brought up the fact that uh, they feel she's being hypersexualized. I mean, if you she look She has at, been a lot recently. Yeah, I was going to say, uh, the initial Ever since version the Arkham of her, Asylum games yeah. and the New 52 relaunch. Mm-hmm. I was going to say, the initial version of her was not sexualized very much, besides the fact that she was an ex-lover of Joker to begin with. So, like, that right. part well, of Well, she it. was... She basically had, like, a crush on the Joker. She couldn't stay away from him. I don't like to think of the Joker as a sexual being at all. Well, no. To him, it's all... It, she's it, just a pawn. Right? Yeah, it's Maybe just it's all like he's toying with her. Right. Um, it's like the ult- it's like the ultimate abusive relationship. Uh huh. Um, and I wonder if we're gonna see it that way in the movie, right. or like how it's gonna play out. Um, but I don't. And I. It I all depends yeah. on what the Joker's role in the movie is. He, yeah, anyway, we, we don't, don't know how much idea. he's gonna be in it. I don't think he's supposed to be the big bad either. I think he's more of just. Like so, you've got the squad, you have the big bad, and you've got the Joker over here just causing a fucking mess. I think, for yeah, everything. I think he's gonna be the chaos <laughs> yeah. throughout the movie. He's the atomic bomb that's thrown into the already the battle. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I mean, I I have high hopes for this movie. It looks really great. I'm, I'm looking excited. forward to seeing more and uh, hearing more about it. Yeah, me too, for sure. It's um, easily my probably the only real DC movie I want to see besides. Uh, um, Wonder Woman. Wonder Woman. I mean, and Justice League, I guess. But Zack Snyder's doing Justice League. Yeah, I mean, to me, uh, Batman, v- Batman v Superman is going to determine a lot for me if I'm going to see any other DC property. I'm definitely going to see Suicide Squad because this trailer has but sold Batman me. Batman v Superman is really going to decide if I see any of the, the main the properties. Other ones. Yeah, same with me. Um, yeah. But I also think it's it's great because we're seeing something that's coming not from Zack Snyder. Uh, that allows us to see, like, if Batman v Superman goes horribly wrong, I hope they pull Zack Snyder and they say, like, yeah. you, you, we need somebody else but at least is, to come in the and thing touch is, things Okay, up. the problem with that is if Batman v Superman is going to make a ton of money. No matter what, you know it's going to make a lot of money. Yeah. Even if, it, right, because it's... It's going to make at least as much as Man of Steel. I don't know if it's going to do better than Man of Steel. But it all depends, but the reviews will determine... Yeah. And that Man of Steel got very mixed reviews. There's still people that love Man of Steel. Well, I personally hate Man of and Steel. I understand some people some people are you know, gave the movie like an eight and it's like this is the best version of Superman we've seen in live film. And it's like not really. Well, I I don't know. To some people maybe because they think the older stuff is boring, but it's like I don't agree with that. It's not the best ver- I don't know. Maybe it is the best version of Superman, but it's still a terrible Superman version on film of Superman. Superman has not been very good. No, yeah. that's my point. It's like every version of Superman has sucked. So this is the least sucky one. So that's why some people are like, "Oh, it was it was good." Right. You want to make a, a Superman good, movie. Want to make a good Superman movie? Just read All-Star Superman and you'll know exactly what to do. Or like Superman Grounded. I still think that's a great series. Or uh, basically just read a Superman comic. For once, and maybe you'll figure it out. Yeah, but and get a, a colorist on the movie who doesn't just who, do sepia. You mean just someone who uses color? Yeah. Because <laughs> you can't tell the difference in any... There's no color in the trailers for Batman v Superman. It drives me insane. Yeah, it's like blackish, grayish, reddish the whole time. Yeah, it's... Oh. Anyways, we got off topic. Well, no, I mean, it's kind of on topic, but... There's always, it wouldn't be an episode if there wasn't a rant about how much we're not excited for Batman v Superman. Superman. Yeah, uh, so I think it's a big mistake for DC to put all their money behind Zack Snyder, who made you know a decent earning. I mean, Batman still made a pretty good amount of money, but it didn't make ass loads more money. Yeah, I just it didn't make that Marvel money. No, <laughs> not not the amount of, of money a Superman should make. Mm-hmm. You know? But anyway. Is, is that is that all for I this? I believe that's all. Week? I mean, uh, there was a bunch of other small news, but I think that's not that's that it. real important. It's nothing that I can remember, so it must not be that important to talk about. Uh, anyway, 
but you can uh, follow us. Is that what I yeah. want to do first? Yeah, sure. Uh, follow us. Uh, follow me on uh, Twitter, Instagram, and I guess Tumblr if you really want. But Tumblr sucks. At Scotty Boy, S C O T T Y B W O Four Ys. You can follow me at Hagnerd all across the internet. Uh, that's H A G N E R D. You can follow uh, us. You can follow us at Fuzzy Loaf. You can follow us at Fuzzy Loaf on the Twitters. Uh, if you're listening to this on iTunes, you can find us on YouTube by searching Fuzzy Loaf. If you're listening to this on YouTube, you can find us on iTunes by searching Fuzzy Loaf. You can subscribe to us there. Uh, you can um, comment, please. Let yes. us know. Race stuff. review. Yep. Um, and also check out uh, the episode that we just posted. Uh, last week of our top 10 movies of 2015 it's yep. a special two-parter we've got uh, some special guests on there talking about we just do a, a round table of our top 10 going from 10 to 1 and mm-hmm. it was a pretty pretty fun night good conversation oh and kind of random uh, you know how I tweeted you, you guys yesterday to watch Turbo Kid the film Turbo Kid the film the like official Twitter like favorited and retweeted it oh really like, sweet cool so <laughs> So I guess I have to watch Turbo Kid now. Yeah, it's a good, it's a good movie. I heard you guys should it. watch. I heard about it. I've, it's after super I looked, after fun. you recommended it, and I looked it up again yesterday. I was like, "Oh, I knew about this." It's it's super fun. Cool. It's like if a really over the top '80s sci fi action film mixed with like a '90s kid film that was also super gory. At the that same sounds time. like something Cat would like. Yeah. So, all right. Um, I guess that's it, and we will smell you later.